I uh, like what I feel, I like what I see. I like Mississippi. I wish Kansas was a little closer. I just recently got acquainted in the last couple of years with some Mississippi preachers, and I like the spirit and the attitude. Love your superintendent. I admire him. Praise God. I might get on leadership a little bit before I leave here. And uh, the minute Moses got up on the mountain and leadership was gone. Now they still had a preacher. Aaron told him, said, break off your earrings. Well, that's a good idea. But uh, it's what they've done with it. And uh, they sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. And God said, Moses, you better get on down there. He said, those people you brought up, you notice how God disinherited them right there. And he said, Moses, that bunch that you brought up. You know, it's like, it's like uh, when little Johnny gets an A on his report card, you say, that's my boy. <laughs> Uh, when he pours ink all over the carpets, you say, Mama, your boy. <laughs> you know, you, you disinherit them when they start messing up. But when leadership is gone, you might just as well face it. Uh, the thing is going to go wacky when leadership is gone. Appreciate the leadership we have in this great United Pentecostal Church. I want to reiterate some things this morning. I love this organization. I love its leadership. I am not divisive, not trying to split anything. But uh, I'm going to I'm going to say some things this morning. We're going to read our text again because uh, this may be the last the last morning that we stay on this particular subject. And now we'll use it for a background, Lord willing. God don't change my mind. But uh, the preaching got hard one day. Jesus led the 5,000. He fed them. He uh, taught them. And they were at the point where they were going to make him king by force. And then the preaching got hard. He said, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you've no life in you. And they said, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? And a bunch of them turned around and walked off, Brother Sandy. And uh, Jesus didn't run after him and say, now, wait a minute, you just didn't understand. Come back here. He just turned to Peter and said, you going too? Peter said, we don't have anywhere else to go. Who thou hast the words of eternal life. Praise God. Well, you may leave me this morning. I, I just feel this laying on my heart. Uh, I, I almost got into it yesterday, but we didn't have enough time. Now, I want to read our text this morning. My Lord, have mercy. Follow me clear down here from Junction City. Now, don't be scared of that fellow sitting there. But he is wild. Uh, let me tell you about it. Back in our old sanctuary, uh, there's a door back there in the corner, and we had intended to make a kitchen, and it has linoleum on the floor, and it's on the north uh, west side. Uh, it's on the west side of the building, and the north wind blows in there, and it was winter time, and that linoleum floor had uh, had a lot of frost on it, and Brother Brown was running and he spun out on that linoleum and broke his leg and I mean he done a job on that leg it was in a cast from his thigh down and the doctor said don't go to church and he come a begging me he said oh he said let me lay in there we got a little room where they all keep their music things in the old sanctuary and uh, he said, let me lay in there on the floor, he said, and listen to the preaching. And I said, well, all, all right, uh, just lay in there on the floor. And so I, I'm assuming that he's laying in there on the floor. And two or three services went by, 
And we got into one of them, you know how you know how it gets sometimes and and it should get all the time. And I looked up and now that, that, that old sanctuary seated six hundred and you, you 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 didn't make you didn't make one lap around that. And I, I looked up and here come Brother Brown on one leg. Well that cast thrown out. And he made two laps around that sanctuary on one leg. My Lord have mercy. Praise God. So, uh, watch him this morning. Watch him. I guess the reason I hadn't been in my own pulpit for five weekends, and I imagine he, he had to drive down here. I sent a Korean boy off to Bible school and and sometimes I, I tell him oh, grab me a two by four and I'll walk down through you I'll scatter you like a bunch of quail and uh, I got a letter from this Korean boy never mind it wasn't Jackson now it wasn't JCM and he said pastor he said send me some tapes for I backslide said some of them two by four tapes he said before I backslide. <laughs> well, Chung Lee, Chung Lee will be back. Let's read our text this morning before I get to wandering. Old preachers never die. They just lose their text and wander. Acts 2 and 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in and in breaking of bread, and in prayers, and fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. All that believed were together and had all things common, sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men as every man had need, and they continued daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God, having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Revelation chapter 3 for our second scripture reading uh, for our textual application this morning. Revelation uh, 3.16 So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment thou mayest be clothed, that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eyesail, that thou mayest see as many as I love. I rebuke and chasten thee, zealous therefore, and repent, behold, I I stand at the door, knock, if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. You may be seated. Now our textual uh, thought and our, uh, our teaching up to this point, or preaching or preaching, whatever you want to call it, up to this point has been somewhere between apostolic power and Laodicea. Yeah. Now, as I said before, I have seen some churches that I would label Laodicea. But I have never seen one that I would call apostolic. That includes the poor, pitiful, little wounded bunch that I try so desperately to pastor. They are not an apostolic. We are not an apostolic church. And I am striving for apostolic power and the signs and the wonders and the revival and the healing and the discernment and the apostolic authority and all of that I am striving for it this morning. I believe in these services. They have been uh, a, a strength to me. They have been an encouragement to me. I need to be preached to. And I get worried about preachers that don't need to be preached to. I've got to be preached to. And they have been a strength to me and an encouragement to my heart. And I, I feel like 
Laodicea is fading into the background. I feel like we're getting a long way away from Laodicea and we are about to enter into that realm of apostolic power. I feel that in my heart this morning. And I'm going to dig into some things. Now, I have been giving you all uh, uh, of the negative. We have been negative up to this point. And it's hard. Now, I, I, I can get on the oneness of the Godhead. I did a little bit yesterday, and you got to shouting. Uh, you, you, you got carried away, and you got to shouting yesterday. When I start getting on the oneness of the Godhead, and accept that you believe that I am, you're going to die in your sin. That, that triggered you. That pushed your button. And I, I, I could push your button and get you to shouting this morning, but I don't feel that in my heart, and I have not felt it up to this point. Now that don't mean that you can't shout if you feel like it. That silly thing will probably be running the aisle in a little bit, but don't pay him no attention. Just ignore him. Praise God. Now, uh, I, I, I am going to the root of it this morning. I'm going to tell you where our problem is. Now, we have a lot of revivalists that have come by. And uh, they don't seem to stay in the book too much, Brother Reed, but I'm going to stay within the pages of this black book this morning, and I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to preach to you the Word of God and how to have an apostolic revival. Now, a lot of folks want a Sam's Club revival. I come down here preaching up at Carthage. Brother Burgess carried me down to Jackson, took me through Sam's Club. And uh, everything is cheap in Sam's Club. I believe, I believe that's what they call it, Sam's Club. And uh, a lot of folks want a Sam's Club or a Walmart revival. We ain't going to get it. That's why we hadn't had it yet. Some of us are not willing to pay the price. I'm going to say it again. Some of us are not willing to pay the price. And some of us just don't know. Give me a little more uh, something on that monitor. Uh, a, a little mellow. I'm a little, I'm, I'm a little, uh, a little bass or a little gain or something, sound man. you got a good sound man. Now, I, I learned a long time ago, I used to say, I wonder sound men can be saved. But oh, don't say that because he can do terrible things to you. You, you need to brag on the sound man. Flatter him a little bit. And, and he'll do you a good job if you just... Oh, we got a good sound man. Everybody say a good sound man. Praise God. Oh, he's going to do me good this morning. I, I can feel it. Praise God. Now, uh, we, we don't want to pay the price. Uh, we, we want the Sam's Club revival. We, 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 uh, uh, we, we're looking, we're, we're like a piece of paper laying us along the side of the road. And, and an automobile will come by and create a wind and a draft. And that piece of paper will flutter up there in the air. But when, when the automobile or the 18 wheeler's gone by, it, it'll just settle back down onto the shoulder of the road. And it'll lay there. And some folks come by and they lift us up. And more. we get up there into a heavenly place. But when the dude leaves, we settle back down on the shoulder of the road and we're laying there waiting for somebody else. Hey, you, you ain't going to have it like that. You, 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 you can stay away uh, from no, uh, that, that kind of a movement. Now, when I, I was pastoring a little home mission church, uh, three members voted me in in a, in a sway back barracks building with the windows knocked out. And, and uh, we, I, I, just let me drop this in your mind. Uh, we, we built a building that's a million three hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and it overshadows everything in the city. The Presbyterians and the Catholics have moved back in the second place. So you know that God has blessed this old ignorant, ugly man. Praise God. And if he done it for somebody as ignorant and as ugly as I am, he can do it for you. Praise God. And you don't need to be in a city, some great metropolitan area. My city is 19,500. Get quiet in here now. Now, I'm not going to talk about numbers and all that. I've just found out that God will bless a fool. And I'm going to tell you, 
I'm going to be perfectly and utterly honest with you this morning. I have seen men, Brother Reed and Brother Sandy, that could preach better than I can. They were more talented than I am. They had more ability than I have. And they went to a city and they prayed longer and worked harder. And it didn't happen. So I'm going to tell you, the wind bloweth where it listed. And ain't nobody going to control the wind but our God. And if God don't do it, it's not going to get done. But that don't mean that you can sit down on the back of your lap. Everybody know where the back of your lap is? That don't mean that you can sit down on the back of your lap and unlax like a hound dog and say, God, pour it on me. I was in this little barracks building. I went back and picked it up now. In the, I, I had visions of, of some powerful evangelist coming through and about 50 pray through and set me on the way to an apostolic revival. And I found out that powerful evangelists don't come to little home mission barracks buildings where there's a handful. Powerful evangelists don't come there, Brother Reed. And then I had a vision of some full five of them move-in families coming from somewhere to move in and help me. And I found that move-ins move out. And they usually come in there talking about how it was back yonder. And I tell them, if you like it back yonder, go on back yonder. The trouble is, they probably take two or three good ones with them when they leave. I'm preaching to you now. I've been through it. So, I decided, me and the little woman, prettiest woman in the world. Oh, you don't think so? I don't want you to think so. If you thought so, you might be giving me problems. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, I begin to feel at home now. Hallelujah. I might get to preaching black in a little bit. Ooh. And the Lord said, Now, you couldn't do that. Some of you couldn't do that. But I can say things. Right? <clears throat> so, we decided that we're going to draw that circle like the man was talking about. We decided that we just gonna have to we just gonna have to do it, you know, or get in a place where God could do it for us. And God has so richly blessed us. We've got them scattered all over the world. Went to the World Conference in Manila, and it was so beautiful. Stopped by the church in Honolulu on the way home. Had two families in the Honolulu church. Got them in Korea, Germany. One morning I got one morning I got two phone calls, one from Panama and one from Korea on the same Sunday morning. Both of them collect. Uh, Lord have mercy, then collect calls I've got from Germany and Korea. Oof. Hallelujah. Uh, I, I, I want to say something. We, we had a we had a woman named Carmen Mojica pray through. She was a Panamanian. She, her, her, her visa ran out. She had to... I mean, you don't believe what I'm telling you. There's a couple they can answer. Uh, she went back to Panama. Her visa ran out. For eight months, she lived for God. Up in the mountains. No preacher, no church, no nothing. And she called me and said, I've got seven ready to be baptized and four of them have prayed through. And I sent the missionary up there 
And now an old boy from Costa Rica has gone up there and married her and he's pastoring the church. And as soon as I get things straight, we're going to build a church in Panama up there in the mountains. Praise God. Had a, had a couple from Puerto Rico, their mom and dad come and prayed through and they lived up in the mountains in a place called Aguas Buenas. And when they went back, uh, 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 I had another boy named Anthony Diaz that we sent to Puerto Rico to work under Brother Smith. And uh, uh, we uh, now, to make a long story short, they have started a church in Aguas Buenas uh, and folks are praying through and Anthony Diaz is up there uh, pastoring that church in Puerto Rico. Hey! We need to lift our eyes and look beyond our poor pitiful little assembly that we've got. God will give us a worldwide revival. And that's what we're getting ready to go into this morning. Where names and celebrities do not exist. Where there are no champions but Jesus. And the power of God is falling and folks are talking in tongues. And we pray the garbage man through between the garbage truck and the garbage can. He starts to talk in tongues. When the back door of the building flies open and folks are walking down the aisle with their hands up talking in tongues before they get to the altar. And not somebody scaring you to death about revelation and Armageddon and then lean over and whisper in your ear, quit speaking English. I'm not talking about that kind of a revival. Whoa. All right. Come on now. Now you want the secret? How many want the secret? Are you ready for it? Now I'm going to stay in the book this morning. Back to Acts chapter 2, verse 42. You ready for the secret? They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in the breaking of bread and in prayers, and fear came upon every soul. And fear came upon every soul. And Many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. That stood out to me. I said, my God, what would they be afraid of? They had just come out of that upper upper room. And my Lord, there were three worlds focused on that upper room. From the foundation of the world. My God, I, I, I don't let me get sidetracked. But from the foundation of the world, before God ever spoke the world into existence, He had that upper room in His mind. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, heaven and hell and the angels' attention was focused on that upper room. Because this was the reason for it all. And out of that upper room, with power and the anointing, and the fear, and the fear of God, you want to know what our problem is? We have lost our fear of God. Oh, I told you I was going to lose some of you this morning. Now the world does not fear God. Romans 3 and 11. Uh, Brother Sandy. The world does not fear God. You you listen to this. I, I read about that lawyer in the boat out there on Lake Poncha train. Stood up, shook his fist. And the lightning bolt zapped him out. Now, to to 
really define the fear of God. It does not mean like when I was a little boy and my Methodist mama put the fear of God in me so strong I was afraid to use a cuss word because I could see God sitting up there on a, th- on a dark cloud up in the heavens and he had a thunderbolt in his hand just waiting for me to say one cuss word and he was going to zap me out. We need a little bit of that too. But a holy reverential awe. A holy reverential awe. You know why folks are late to church? The fear of God is cooling in their heart and soul. You know why the world, you know why the world's not running to our door? Because of this. Read, Brother Sandy. There is none that understandeth. There is none that understandeth, the writer said. There is none that seeketh after God. There is no one that seeketh after God. They're all gone out of their way. They're all gone out of their way. They are all together become unprofitable. They are all together unprofitable, the writer said. There is none that doeth good. There is none that doeth good. We're talking about the world out there now. Read on. No, not one. No, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. Their sepulchre. throat is an open sepulcher. Hey, gossiping would stop if you had the fear of God in you. All right. I tell him at home, you might have been saved if it hadn't been for your telephone. All right, come on. Your telephone is sending you to hell. Read on. With their tongues, With they their have used deceit. Tongues, they have used deceit. I'm going to get into that after a while. The poison of asp up is in their lips. The poison of asp is in their lips. Whose mouths are full of cursing. Their mouths are full of cursing. And bitterness. And bitterness. Their feet. Their feet. Swift to shed blood. Swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their way. Destruction and misery are in their way. And the way of peace they have not known. And there is no peace in their heart. And there is no fear of God before their eyes. Because there is no fear of God before their eyes. There is the problem in the world today. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Homosexuals openly define God. Marching in Washington, openly flaunting their perverse, dirty, rotten, filthy uh, homosexual sins. Gambling and prostitution. A pastor in a military city, drugs, alcohol, all of the things that soldiers want are there and will be there. Drug addicts, ex-heroin mainliners, ex-cocaine sniffers. Some with degrees, God's no respecter. Persons. That one old boy, I told this young man who's here yesterday, he been up twice, had a $700 a day habit before he went up the second time. I said, What'd you go up for? The second he saw, he said, Armed robbery. Armed robbery. Aggravated kidnapping. He said, we picked up this girl going to make a prostitute, said she wouldn't go. Said, they're going to shoot her veins full of a saline solution and kill her. Said, I wouldn't let them. You get that in your mind, he was tough enough. He said, I wouldn't let him. He said, we took her in a car out on North 77, going to shoot her and throw her out of the car. He said, I wouldn't let him. And he said, we took her back to town and turned her loose. She put the finger on us, and all of them turned state's evidence, and I went up. I'm going to tell you a good one. Sitting in my office one day, he said, 
Brother Westberg, he said, God had his hand on me all my life. I said, what? Yeah. He said, armed robbery, shot it out with the police. He said, we was in this joint in Kansas City. We had the money. We was fixing to go out the door. So we had them all leaning up against the wall. And he said, God spoke to me. You still with me? He said, God spoke to me. I turned to my buddy and said, pat him down. Said he pulled a thirty eight off and underneath the man's shoulder. He said, he just shot me in the back going out the door, but God had his hand on me. What you going to say? What are you going to say? How did I get sidetracked like that? What the power of God. What amazes me is He is so tender. He said, Brother Westberg, I'm afraid I blasphemed the Holy Ghost. He said, a thought came into my mind. And he said, I wonder. He said, uh, it just came into my mind. He said, do you suppose if a thought just comes into your mind that you can blaspheme God with just thinking something? But he's got the fear of God in him. The fear of God is in him. Now, the fear of God is not in the world. We just, uh, last conference, prayed the supplier of all the drug pushers in Junction City. We prayed the supplier through. Right, Brother Brown? Now, he, he supplied all the pushers. He said, a man named Steve come out of New York City and brought the stuff. And he said, uh, uh, I, I sold it all. And I said, I asked Marti, I said, will they let him live? Oh, yeah, he said, they'll let him live. He said, they know this church. He said, they'll let him live as long as he don't talk. I'm living in a tough city. Tough city. But God can move in tough cities. Praise God. Now, the fear of God is not in the world. I, I believe the fear of God is coming in the world. I, it must have been over five Sundays ago because I hadn't preached at home in five Sundays. But one Sunday morning, I was just preaching a mundane, uh, ordinary, one of them, one of them dead, dull, dry, boring Sunday morning sermons. You know, the, the, the kind you preach on Sunday morning? One of them Baptist, dead, dull, dry, boring Sunday morning uh, sermons. Uh, and, and all of a sudden, this young man jumped up. And he run to the altar. And he got down there, and, and friend, he, he wasn't saying, now I lay me down to sleep. He was screaming at the top of his voice, I've got to find God! I've got to find God! I've got to get a hold of God! Come on. He got to screaming, right, Brother Brown? We had an altar service that Sunday morning, and a lot of them times we have altar service on Sunday morning. Praise God, we get out of there one thirty, two o'clock, and we, we forget about the Colonel's Chicken and the Burger King and all of that junk, and we just have church on a Sunday morning. Praise God. He got the Holy Ghost in the baptistry that night. He come up out of the water. He come up like a shot, and he was talking in tongues when he come out of the water. Next Thursday night, I was given a dead, dull, dry, boring Bible study. And I was about to close it out. He started down the aisle. He had a young man on either side of him. He said, Brother Westberg, we've got to have an altar service tonight. He got them two young men in the altar and literally pushed them down into the altar. Hey, he's got the fear of God in his heart. We need to get that fear of God. We need to renew that fear of God in our hearts. God has blessed us so much. We just finished our camp meeting. And uh, I always preach on Friday afternoon. And this is what I preached. The fear of God. You're not going to have any church trouble if the fear of God is there. Now, I can have these men turn to all these scriptures. Give me Proverbs 
uh, 8 and 13. Give me Proverbs 16 and 6. I could go to Psalms. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. You're not even smart till you begin to fear God. When you begin to walk before Him in a holy reverential awe, weighing every deed and every action and every word in the balance of whether or not it's going to please God. And, and oh, I, I've got to do that which pleasing in the sight of God. When you begin to get that fear of God in you, then, then God begins to connect up with you. And with a great fear, and fear came upon every soul, and the signs and the wonders came out of the fear of God. And the signs and the wonders are not going to come until we renew that fear of God. They can have all of the gifts of the Spirit conferences they want, and I'm not against them. Come on now. Hey, I love conquest. I'm not fighting anything like that. My God, we need to pray early in the morning. I tell them I'll ride the train as long as the train is on the track. But when the train gets off the track, I'm going to get off the train. But as long as the train is on the track, I'm going to ride the train. And I don't care who the conductor is, and I don't care who the engineer is. We get to worrying about who's going to be the engineer and who's going to be the conductor. Hey, there ain't no champions in this thing. We don't need any champions. We have had too many champions. We need one champion, and it was him that hung on a cross. When we get the fear of God in our heart, we'll have the signs and the wonders and the revival. I thought you'd probably leave me when I got to preaching this. Ah! Hallelujah! My God, my God! If we could have a baptism of the fear of God! A holy baptism of the fear of God! Proverbs 18, 8 and 13. Whoever. The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. Is to hate evil. It's to hate evil. The reason... The reason we don't hate evil, my God, Brother Sandy, hold that, hold that proverb 16 and 6 and give me Ezekiel 9 and 1. The reason we don't hate evil, we live so close to sin and we rub shoulders with sin so much that we have lost our hatred of sin. That apostolic church hated sin. All right. The fear of the Lord will make you hate sin. You'll hate the very thought of it. You won't be playing with it in your mind. If you hate sin, give me Ezekiel 9 and 1. He crieth also in mine ears. He cried in my ears with a loud voice. With a loud voice, saying, "Saying, cause them that have charge over the city. Cause to draw them here. that have charge over the city to get in here. Every man with his destroying weapon in his hand." And it wasn't the mayor and the chief of police and the councilman that walked in. Read, and behold, six men. Six men came from the way of the high gate. Came from the way of the high gate, which lieth toward the north. Angels that Brother Stone King was a preaching about last night. Six angels walked into that place, and every man a slaughter weapon. And in every his man hand. had a destroying or a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them, and one man among them was clothed with linen. Was clothed in linen, and with a rider's ink horn. And had a rider's and they went in. And they went in. And give me verse 4 now. 
And the Lord said unto and him, the Lord said unto them, Go through the midst of the city. Walk through the midst of the city. Through the midst of Jerusalem. Through the midst of Jerusalem. And set a mark. And set a mark. Upon the forehead. Upon the forehead. Of the men that sighed. Of every man that sighed. And that cried. And cried. For all the abomination. And weeping over the sin and the abomination that's that in this done. city. Make a mark on that man that's weeping and crying over the wickedness and the abomination and the sin that's in this city. Put a mark on him. Read. And to the others he saith in my hearing. And to the others he said in my hearing, Go ye after him. You go after him. Through the city. Through the city. And smite. And smite. Let not your eyes spare. And slay. You smite and slay and kill. And don't let your eyes spare. Neither have ye pity. Don't you have any pity? Slay utterly old and young. You kill utterly old and young. Both maids and little children. Both maids and little children. And women. And women. But come not near any man. But don't you come near any man. Upon whom is but the mark? Put that mark on his forehead. And began at my sanctuary. And you better begin at the sanctuary of God. And we need to start at the sanctuary of God. That's it. My God, my God. Start in the church house. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. We have rubbed shoulders with sin we have could become I'm saying we you notice that we I'm not saying you I'm saying we we have been so blessed of God we've gotten careless in our attitude toward God the reason the reason we don't walk into the church house with our hands in the air shouting and praising God is because we don't have enough of that reverential awe and fear of God in our hearts. My Sunday begins at 6 o'clock. I'm at the church at 8 o'clock. There's already a prayer meeting going on. We go through our service. I go home. I teach an hour and preach an hour on Sunday morning. I'm limp-legged. I go home limp-legged and fall in bed. Don't you call me on Sunday afternoon. You get a recorder. That's all you're going to get. Then I come back at 5.30 that night. I have never been the first one there. Service starts at 7. I'm there at 5.30. There's always someone in the prayer room. There's always two or three carloads ahead of me. It's already going hot in the prayer room. Got a black girl named Eddie Addie Pearl. Her last name is Lynn. She can sing. She can sing. Oh, I thought about bringing her with me, but she couldn't get off and her silly old husband's off in Georgia anyhow. But I can hear her when I walk in. If they can't pray, they hadn't ought to sing. I said if they can't pray, they hadn't ought to sing. And then, for 45 minutes or an hour, she's singing in the, in the altar service. I've never seen anyone with vocal cords like that woman's got. She can belt it out for 45 minutes or an hour in the altar service after she prayed an hour and a half before church and sang a special. She can still belt it out. The reason we don't have apostolic prayer is because we don't have the fear of God. If we had the fear of God, we'd run to the prayer room. They prayed till the place was shaken. They prayed an angel into that prison. But it was because of fear. By the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. 
Give me Proverbs 16 and 6. By mercy and truth. By mercy and truth. Iniquity is purged. Iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord. By the fear of the Lord. Men depart from evil. Men depart from evil because of the fear of the Lord. When you get the fear of God in them, they'll quit their sinning. And they're not going to quit sinning until they get that fear of God down in their heart. My God, I forgot my handkerchief. Now, I'm going to flip. I'm going to flip flop like a highway patrolman. There's some fear we need to get rid of. Come on now. For 2 Timothy 1 and 7, God did not give us the spirit of fear. Jesus said, fear not, little flock. It's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Faith and fear cannot work together unless it is the fear of God. You've got to get the fear of the world and the fear of what people say. Right. I reckon I ought to preach about them barking dogs. Quit worrying about what anybody says. Yes, sir. That's good. If I'd have worried about what somebody says, they'd come by my place, they'd say, on the first note they're off running and shouting, honey, it didn't begin on the first note. It began an hour and a half uh, earlier in the prayer room. That's where it began. That's good. That's all they saw was the first note because they wasn't around the prayer room. And I had a lot of criticism about the way we worshipped. You're not supposed to know that, Brother Brown. Don't you trouble your pitiful little mind with that, all right? And I got nervous about it. I got nervous about it. He just kept coming, you know, and pretty soon I called in three men. Brother Urshan was one of them. Brother Robert McFarlane was another one. Brother Wayne Pounders was another one. I trust all those men have utter and complete confidence in every one of them. And I, I didn't say anything. I just let them. And going home, I'd say, what do you think about that worship? And without any deviation, all three of them said the same thing. They said, Brother Westberg, the churches that are worshiping are growing. So I quit worrying about what people say. Let me tell you about what them people say. I used to drive an 18-wheeler. I had 23 years of it. I drove in French Morocco. You topped one of them hills... Eucalyptus trees on either side of that blacktop highway. You come around the curve, and I was smoking that hashish at the time. And you might, I was pulling a 60 ton Talbert low boy with a sterling white, had a 350 Buddha in it. You ain't never heard of Buddhas in this country. It had, it had a 15 speed transmission, two gear shifts, five on the main box, three on the auxiliary. You run one, you shifted with both hands. Held the steering wheel with your belly. That's easy if you got a belly. Come around the curve. There'd be a string of camels across the highway. No shoulder. You come around the curve and hear one of them rag headed buses. Turban heads sticking out of every window and goats and bicycles tied on the top. And that dude on the wrong side of the road. I can tell you stories. <laughs> I told you the other morning about rear ending that deputy sheriff in Beauregard Parish between the Ritter and Rose Pine. <laughs> well, I can tell you some stories, but I ain't gonna get into that. I ain't gonna get into that trucking or cowboying or sailing this morning. I got too much to do. Praise God. Hallelujah. But driving an 18 wheeler before Interstate 10 was ever thought of. Down old Highway 90 through Jeanneret, Morgan City, and Berwick, and Homa. 
I used to be able to name every town, New Iberia, Lafayette. Oh, I used to be able to Crowley, Generette, <laughs> Benton, Lake Charles. I could name them all. <laughs> Just speed them out. I, I could name you every town up Highway 171 between Lake Charles and Shreveport. I, I could name them all. And on them two-lane highways, you know, 18-wheelers make a lot of noise. And them dogs could hear you coming. And I'd watch them running down that lane, standing, waiting for me to come. And they barking at me. And they'd run up there and bark at the wheels. You know, I ain't never been dog bit yet. But I watched some of them dogs that got too close to the wheel. And I'd hear a pop. And I'd see their body fly. And oh, don't, don't think that I, don't think I enjoy running over dogs. Every time I'd hit a dog, I love dogs. And, and every time I'd hit a dog, I'd just get a cold feeling in my stomach. I'd say, oh no, another one. I don't like running over dogs. That's not my cup of tea. I don't enjoy that. But some dogs you can't control. And so, now I, here I am sitting up there with $150,000 worth of truck and trailer. And probably half a million dollars of cargo sitting on the back of my neck. 45 foot van, 13 and a half high. And you think I'm going to put all that in the ditch to avoid one barking dog? Uh uh. I ain't going to put all that in the ditch to avoid one barking dog. On. Not no matter how much I love dogs, I ain't going to do that. Right. Yeah. Come on now. So I held that thing in the right lane and had my foot in the pump and let the dogs bark. <laughs> Just let the dogs bark. <laughs> Just let the dogs bark. <laughs> now... I got my orders from the dispatcher. And I know where I come from, and I know where I'm going, and let the dogs back. <laughs> but don't let them get too close to the wheel now. Don't get too close to the wheel. Oh, I told you. I told you I'm going to lose some of you this morning. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, hallelujah. My God, have mercy. Ah. And the wise man said, Now let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Let's hear the end of it. Fear God! Fear God! Fear God! And keep His commandments! For this is the whole duty of man! God created you to fear Him! The man that wrote 3,000 Proverbs said, Now let's hear the end of it all. Solomon's problem was he couldn't, he couldn't obey his own preaching. He could preach it, but he couldn't live it. That's his problem. Well, Brown, I'm glad you come. You, you go ask that silly-looking black fella. If I don't preach like this at home, only at home I get tough. I get nasty at home. I'm being kind this morning. Hey, I'll call her name and stand them up and march them out the door. Right? Don't you mess with me. Now, I ain't going to do that this morning. Come on, man. Come on. The other day I asked this old boy, I said, which door do you want to go out of?
I'm sending down to the PA of W, right? I said, down there on the corner of 5th and Adams, you can rub up against all of the women you want to. That's where you belong. Go on down there. My God, you are looking at me now. Come on. You knew what you was getting when you asked me to come. That's it. That's right. That's why you're here. Yeah. Perfect fear. And I'm going to get into this before I leave. Hebrews 11 and 7. Somebody. And somebody, 2 Corinthians 7 and 1. And I'm not going to get on either one of these subjects this morning, but I'm going to get on it. Let me show you what the fear of God will do. Besides bring revival, what the fear of God will do. Read. Give me, give me, uh, give me uh, uh, Hebrews 11 and 7. By faith. Noah. Noah. Give me that by faith. By faith. By faith, Noah. Noah. Being warned of God. Being warned of God. Of things not seen as yet. Of things not seen as yet. Moved with fear. Moved with fear. The fear of God will bring faith. All right. Faith came by fear. That's it. By faith. Noah, being warned of God of things not yet seen, moved with fear. I'm going to get on faith. I might preach a little bulldog faith before I leave here. Second Corinthians seven and one. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved. Let us cleanse ourselves. Let us cleanse ourselves. Of all. From all filthiness, filthiness of, of the, the flesh, flesh and spirit. spirit. Perfect Perfecting holiness. Holiness. In the fear of God. In the fear of God. The fear of God will bring perfect holiness. Yes, it will. My God, I might get into this a little bit before I leave here. On my early morning class, I allow the visitors to send up questions because I'm not afraid of any questions, you know. I, I tell them, I don't ask why I'm so ugly. I don't know. <laughs> my mother was an attractive lady. My father was a well-proportioned man. And I, I, don't, I don't know how it happened. It just Don't ask me that one. They say, why do they run? I say, ask him. I say, you might have to run to catch him. And while you're running to catch him, to ask him, you might begin to feel what he's feeling. And then that'll be your question will be answered. But I believe it was last Sunday morning or the Sunday before, someone set up a question and said, Is a wedding ring jewelry? I said, Is Cadillac an automobile? Is the Pope Catholic? Now, don't you, don't you worry. I've got beautiful friends that have wives that wear rings, and I love them. And I love their wife with a godly love, a godly, godly, godly love. I don't have no problem with her. It don't bother me a bit. I'll put them in my pulpit. But I ain't going to quit preaching against rings. All right. Come on. I wish some fellow that's got more knowledge and ability and understanding than me can tell me why you can put where you can't put one in your in your ear. If you put one in your ear, it's jewelry. You put one in your nose, you're stupid. You put one on your finger, it's all right. Come and explain that to me. I, I want you to explain. Somebody that has more knowledge and ability and understanding, please come and explain that to me. Please, please. Don't, don't leave me in ignorance and darkness. Come and tell me. Come and tell me. Come on, you're doing all right. Now, I might get into that a little bit more. 
before I leave here, if Brother Travis don't pull my coattail, ah, Lord, I'm feeling good. What time is it? I'm afraid to ask. Looks like 15 more minutes. Now, fear. See, I come back and picked it up now. The fear of God will bring faith. I'm going to talk about faith before I leave here. The fear of God will bring holiness. Perfect holiness. Of flesh and spirit. Don't tell me you got it on the inside and it don't show on the outside. Outward holiness is an expression of a Holy Spirit. Let me hit one more thing. I want to say this while it's still on my mind. I preach against this frizzed hair. I'll allow it. You say, give me chapter and verse, okay? Avoid the very appearance of evil. And it may not be cut, but it looks cut. I'm afraid to say how many of you still love me. I'm afraid. And I got to thinking one day, I said, my God, men preach it. Parents try to enforce it. What would it take to get them women to unfrizz that hair? And God gave me the answer. You want to hear the answer? You sure you want to hear the answer? You let three or four of them devil-worshipping female rock singers get up and slick their hair down tight and walk out on a stage and sing five or six of them acid rock songs. Oh, you're not shouting now. I lost you now. Still love you. I lost you, but I still love you. Come on, man. I'm going to get off that holiness now. I might get into that more. Romans 1 and 4 says the spirit of holiness. There is a spirit of holiness. And there is a spirit of unholiness and rebellion. And I'm going to leave that. Now, our ladies don't copy them rock singers. Don't misunderstand what I said. But they copy the ones that are copying the rock singers. Our sweet little lovely ladies don't copy them rock singers. But they all copy the ones that are copying the rock singers. That's probably That's where it is. Come on, brother. Our sweet, lovely, kind, beautiful ladies. God bless their sweet spirits. I hope they're all still sweet. <laughs> I got. I'm, a, I'm glad I got my glasses off. I can't read it down. Come on, they're doing all right. Come on. Now, I got a little time left, and I got to hit this. Give me Acts five and eleven. Now, fear came upon every soul, and signs and wonders. Oh, I'm going to lose a bunch of you now. I'm going to lose you. Read. Somebody. And great fear came upon. Oh, and great fear. Now, Acts two forty three said fear came upon all every soul, and they had 